In this Photoshop tutorial, we are gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this photo with just one tool inside of Photoshop. And that's a pretty big deal because over the years of, of teaching, whenever I wanted to remove a distraction, I, I had to, to show anywhere from three to five different tools inside of Photoshop. And that's not to say that those tools still don't have their place at certain times, but for the most part, with some of the newer technology we have inside of, of Photoshop, we can get the, the job done with really just one tool. So uh, we'll take a look at that and then we'll also even show you a couple little Lightroom tips toward the end there that I, I think you'll find interesting. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, this photo comes to us from Hilda Mayer and uh, so thank you Hilda for allowing me to use the photo. I, I think I think you did a, a great job on the photo. There's really there, there's not much more we can do. I think it's well exposed. Um, I think it's sharp. The ISO is only 800. There's not really any noise uh, to speak of. Even if we zoom in here, there's just, it's so negligible. It's not worth doing anything with. So there, there's not much from a workflow perspective. I think it's well exposed. I'll hit the auto button. I think that does a nice job of giving a little bit of contrast, a little bit of saturation, and I'll adjust that exposure a little bit brighter there. Now, I do think we need to crop it because why do all of our, our distraction removal on parts of the photo we're not going to show? And I think this photo needs to be cropped in. It's, it's, so, it's so sharp, the colors are great. There's just so many great things about it that uh, I think we need, to, uh, we need to crop in and show it a little bit more. So I'm, I'm gonna go pretty tight there. But at this point, I think we're ready for Photoshop. So just photo, edit in, and we head over here to Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, uh, I'm gonna press Command or Control J to make a copy of the layer to do my work on. And you're gonna see how that's gonna come in handy in just a moment here. I'm gonna go over here to the Remove tool. The only change I have from the default is, uh, I turn Remove after each stroke, I turn it off, which just means I have to hit the checkbox manually each time. And I'm fine with that. I would rather do that because sometimes I paint in a non-continuous area and I don't want it to remove after each stroke. Uh, if you paint, uh, a full circle or square or just close the loop around something, it'll automatically fill that for you. Then I'll hit the checkbox there and that will commit that change. Um, depending on, you can see sometimes it leaves a little bit of an edge. We're gonna take care of that in just a second here. So I'm just gonna get this part done next and you'll see one of the ways we can take care of that. Again, hit that little checkbox to commit the change. So you can see it didn't do perfect around there and how it interpreted the edge. That's where that duplicate layer comes in because now I can add a layer mask to it and now I can bring back part of the original layer. Okay, and there's any number of ways you can do this with, with masks. You could have you could have done it five different ways. This is just the way that worked for me on this one. Uh, that mask is white. I'll zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna switch to my brush tool, B and I'm gonna change over to a black foreground color. Um, from a brush standpoint, I'm using a fairly small brush hardness around 50, 60%. And then all I'm gonna do is just go and paint back some of the original. All right. If I go too far, you can see I did there, just hit the letter X, and then I can go back in and remove that. Like so. So we got that part done. Let's head over here. I'm not even really sure what I have to do here. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint more than I need back into it. All right, so we can see, we can see what we're working with and then I'll just paint it away. So it's adding a little bit there, not the end of the world. And get rid of that. Switch over, back, click onto the layer there. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit with that remove tool there and just see what happens, see if it gets rid of that stray area there and it did a perfect job of it, okay? Speaking of perfect, I can think of, I can't even say it with a, a straight face, I can think of no more perfect a time to have a quick word from our sponsor, quick 30 seconds. I've once again teamed up with Dave Cross Summits to bring you the Lightroom Summit 2024. It's coming up at the end of May. Uh, it is totally free to watch. So every class is free to watch for 48 hours after it airs. Uh, we've gotten in some of the best Lightroom instructors out there, put together a very thoughtful outline uh, to, really, to really get your Lightroom knowledge uh, ahead and moving forward. 
Um, the summit is free to watch. You can sign up for a, a, a pass for that. And then there also is a VIP pass, which gives you lifetime access to watch the classes whenever you want. Plus the instructors prepare lots of bonuses and extras uh, for those that join the VIP pass, plus class notes that go along with each class. So there's a link that you can uh, take a look at, sign up for a free pass. Hope to see you over in the summit. Let's get back to the tutorial. So we got that whole top part done and looking pretty good. Let's start to work, work on this area here, okay? Now, this one gets a little bit tricky. So what I did is, and, and by the way, for me personally, uh, there, there's absolutely no reason to keep this layer. All it's gonna do is make the file size bigger and confuse things. I never, ever, ever gonna wanna go back. So I press Command or Control E and I merge it down, okay? Uh, but I'll do the same thing. I'll create another duplicate layer that's already got the changes committed to it because it'll give me a route back if I need it later. So we'll head over to our remove tool. This time, if, if I just go remove this, I'll try to do it really quick, but you can see it, it gets, it, it doesn't do a great job of it and how it starts to eat away into the bird here. So what I did is I went to select subject, made a selection of it, all right, and then Right now, if I did anything with the remove tool, it's outside of the selection. It's not gonna do anything to the photo. So what I need to do is invert this selection. So we just go to, and you can use any one of the, uh, there's little little shortcuts for it here. I believe it's that second icon there and you can do it in the menu. You can use keyboard shortcuts, however you like to do it. But now I have a selection of the outside area. So now what I'm gonna do is go through and paint along the edge here, Hit that little checkbox should do a pretty good job of getting rid of that. Okay. And then I'll also, I'll hit it again. Just if it doesn't work, you can see it left a little bit of a seam there. So if it doesn't work, I'm just going to hit it again. And that's your, that's your way of telling, telling the tool, Hey, I'm not really happy with what you did here. So why don't you give it another try? Uh, deselect. I think that looks pretty good. A little bit of a smudgy area here, but we can, uh, we can see if we can give it one more swipe with the brush. Should do a good job there, okay? All right, next thing is we need to get rid of some of the area over here. So once again, I'm gonna go and paint, paint along here. And just get rid of that. Fill all that in, hit that checkbox. No reason to really make a selection at this point because um, we're just gonna keep eating away at this. It's not gonna do it right, uh, right off the bat, but I'm just going to uh, just chip away at some of these areas pretty haphazardly. There's no reason to be precise with it. Uh, the, the tool, to me, the tool is that good. The, the, it actually eliminates the need of so many other tools and things that we had to do to, to try to make this more precise. I'll give it one more uh, little swipe down here. It doesn't have to be perfect because you really don't know what this branch would have looked like had we not gotten rid of these things. And at this point, it's really it really becomes about your 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 vision of what you imagine the branch to look like. Um, you can get rid of as much or as little of it as you want. Um, there, there's no rule to this one. I'm kind of just using a guide of, of what what looks like it, it should, you know, doesn't look like it, it's awkward or there's something sticking out of where it would never stick out from. There's an odd piece of the branch somewhere. So that actually uh, looks really good to me, okay? Uh, you know, maybe get rid of that, I don't know. It, does, it doesn't bother me too much, but it might you, and, and when it's your photo, you can do it. Uh, there's one little area up here. We'll probably go in and get rid of. That should do the trick there, okay? So I think overall, we did great. Every once in a while, there's, there's a little spot, and I know I said one tool. There's a little smudgy spot that's going on right here and, and I think no matter how much I paint along it with, along that edge with the remove tool, <laughs> and it made a liar out of me. I was gonna say, I think no matter how much I paint along with it, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna look smudgy. 
it actually looks good. I was gonna say sometimes I'll finish it off a little bit with the clone stamp tool uh, if I see any little smudgy area there, but it, it, to me it actually looks great. So it's not something I would really uh, even worry about. The tool, it, it's, it works different every single time you do it. So that's why it's sometimes hard to do a tutorial like this because right in the middle of the tutorial, I will have practiced it five times, and the sixth time when I record, it does something different. So it's a, it's a little bit, uh, the tool takes a little bit of getting used to and how it works. But I think overall, we did a really nice job of cleaning that up. Uh, the only thing we do now is hit File Save. That's gonna save our copy of the photo back over to Lightroom. And, you know, if I were to finish it up at all, the one thing I might do, I'm gonna go to the masking tool I go to the linear gradient. I'm gonna drag a linear gradient upward, right about here. And I'm gonna reduce the highlights a bit. You reduce the exposure. That branch is, is pretty bright, okay? So it. I wanna take it down. It, it's. We're never gonna make it dark, nor should we. I think that's part of the photo. And to me, if, if you're looking at this, the photographer did something way wrong and this photographer did nothing wrong. This is the star of the photo. I don't think the branch is overly bright, but we can subdue it a little bit. And I did that with the gradient. The only thing is, is it's obviously affecting a larger part of the photo. So I could go to subtract. I could go down here to color range and then just click and hold down the shift key a couple of times and then just click around there. And that will start to subtract that color range from it. So you can see before I subtracted the color, after. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, keep the mask doing what it's supposed to do, but don't affect the areas in the green here, which is what it did, which is why it started to get a little bit dark there. Pretty, being pretty nitpicky with it, um, but overall I think that just, uh, it's, an, it's a nice little touch to, to help take some of the heat away from the brightness of that branch. And if you do see any darkness anywhere else, you could always go up here to subtract, go to the brush tool, and then just manually get rid of it. Uh, another thing that's helped sometimes is turning on the overlay of the mask so it actually can actually see where it's affecting the photo. And I can get rid of any of that red where I don't want it to. Just don't forget to turn the overlay off when you're done. Now, if you wanna see a quick before and after here, I'll press the letter F for full screen. And there is our before photo. And then there is our after. So before and then after. If I'm being picky, a couple little smudgy spots down there. If I were to go back and redo it, it'd be really easy to get done. But overall, just one tool that really takes the job and, and does what would have taken probably three to four different tools in the past. And, and honestly, does it e even better than I ever could have. I think it's a tool that you really need to take a look at and, and spend some time with. Uh, while you're here, also, if you're looking to learn a little bit more, I've got a great tutorial on adding uh, light and mood to a very dark photo. So if you're looking for a tutorial to go to next, that's a great one to check out.